So, we've started with we started playing the hardest game of all time, trying to navigate the PlayStation 3's PlayStation Network. <laughs> Truly the most difficult and long game of all time with the most frequent disconnects. Yep. Strap yourselves in for a horror. <laughs> Is that how we're opening? <laughs> yes. Okay, I guess so. What's up, guys? So, I know it's been a little bit, but we had some technical problems arise, but now we are back, as well as scheduling issues. But today, for, for what we've been to do for a while now, welcome to Let's Play Joseph's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Yes! I'm surprised you didn't open with singing So Chino Sonome, actually. I am honestly surprised. Uh, See, so I was thinking about that, but then what I want to do instead was I want to end with that, like how we started playing when Jojo, <laughs> when Joseph beat Cars, yeah, I and guess I started so. playing. It did end off with that, didn't it? Huh. It did, and it was great because it was the second half of the song that you would otherwise have never have heard. Yeah. Also, my god, if you ever get to see he, uh, that singer, I've seen concert videos of him, he puts on a fucking show. <laughs> Which, uh, good news for us, him and his entire band are coming to Saboten Con in, in Phoenix, Arizona in September from September 2nd through September 5th. Yarp. She's gonna be fun. Actually, this album's <laughs> gonna be fu amazing in general. It's full of JoJo guests. Yep. It, ha it has the Joe Stars, it has... It has uh, Joseph Joestar. It has Jonathan Joestar. It used to have old Jos. Uh, used to have old Joseph last <laughs> uh, two years ago. Richard Avcar. Yep. Nice. That guy was a treat. <laughs> he always is. Yeah. Apparently, he's not. He's not too up on different ways people pronounce things because he actually thought that Macross and Macross are two different things. Hmm. That's kind of great, actually. He had to actually. He actually had to ask Harmony Gold's uh, PR rep that was with that was with them for the Robotech uh, 30th anniversary reunion. <laughs> That's great. The All loading right. screen is kind of horrifying. It's Rohan flipping through the pages of of Jesus Christ. I'm forgetting his name. Koichi's face. Yeah. I am the sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, See, I so, told you that. So, we're currently recording this in like mid 2017, and uh, part four just aired like last year. So, we're, I haven't gone back to rewatch re it or relive the experience, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of fresh in our minds, but it's out there a little bit. Which originally intended <laughs> to do this pretty much as soon as part four was done, but didn't really get around to that. I love how the menu is, it's all different character space. It's all the main character uh, characters, also uh, part one through seven. I didn't know yep. it was that sooner, actually. Holy shit. Yep. And then just, I love how Arcade is just its own separate button. <laughs> yeah. That's always bothered, bothered the shit out of me. And you can also see all the JoJo's in Jotaro's body. <laughs> Basically. Alright, <sighs> so basic breakdown for this game. Um, if you ever played any of the original uh, Capcom fighting games, it's sort of similar to that, but this one's different in that it was made by Cyber Connect 2. It's the same Cyber Connect 2 that happens to make, you know, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. A game a few people want me to play, apparently. So, uh, yeah. It, it's weird though, cause it's not. Actually, no. Can we take this in training mode for a second? Shoot. Okay. Uh, actually, say, can I see the controller? So I don't have as much practice with this as I'd like to, but I think it'd be more practical for me to know the system mechanics overall than like each individual character going to it. Because we we're gonna be switching a lot. Yeah. <laughs> let's go with Brian Butter for luring this. What's up, Ryu? <laughs> All right. So I imagine a lot of you people. Uh, Big okay. Kira's house. Gears house? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> bread and butter. It's also a good stage. So it's far, one of the few stages I actually visually like looking at. <laughs> yeah. So um, I imagine there's probably a few people here who are only ex exclusive to watching the anime. In which case, I respect you. I respect you for that, but you really should get on the manga because you're really not spoiling anything for yourself, and the feature parts are really great, especially part six, part seven as well, and Toho music. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, I want to just illustrate a few things really fast. Um, yeah, so this is sort of a 2D, um, 2.5D kind of fighting game. You don't have free movement up and down, but you can press the guard button up and down in order to go in those directions. It's kind of weird. Um, you have a punch button. It's sort of like a three-button fighter, but not really. Um, you have a strong, medium, heavy. Um, you have a throw button, which is dedicated to L1, I want to say. No, that is not, L that is not it. 
I guess it's R2. To, I guess you get to see Star Plot in the world first, but why not? Your throw is R2. Long and short of it, if you if you can play Persona 4 Arena, you can play this. And if you've <laughs> played Persona 4 Arena, you've played this. <laughs> sort of. If you play a lot of fighting games, you probably will be able to pick up the fundamentals of this pretty quickly. Yeah, but I say that specifically because Persona 4 Arena Arcade. has the actual has the actual summoning your stand and attacking with your stand mechanic that this uh, that this game does. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you've ever played any two sort of 2D fighting game, you're probably gonna have a solid understanding of this. Um. So yeah, yeah. Crouching so moves as well. Hey, Koichi. Uh. Yeah. So not too complicated. The only thing is that this does have Street Fighter inputs, which is on the command list. Yeah, like horizontal forward, shurikens, all that good stuff. And yeah, I just want to illustrate that really fast so you guys know what you're getting yourselves into. Okay. And of course, as mentioned before, spoilers for everything for the entire JoJo series, especially between us. Me and, <laughs> me and Brandon share a pretty good collective knowledge of the JoJo universe by now. Spoilers for everything up to the first two or three chapters of Jojo Lion. <laughs> Literally, spoilers up the ass, so I'm sorry guys, but you know, this stuff is easily accessible to anyone, and what, what, did Part 7 come out like mid, late 2000s? Part 7 started in 2004 and it went all the way until 2011. Oh Jesus. Part, because <laughs> part, 7, part 7 was when it was when Jojo switched magazines, and when it went from being a weekly series to a monthly series. That, that's why it went for 7 years. Yeah, I can understand that. You got you got longer chapters though, and the uh, and the art got a massive bump in quality because Araki had much more time to draw his chapters. Yeah, so there's a couple of th interesting things about this game actually. Uh, first of all, um, there, you'll notice that it's, especially if you look at um, Josuke, uh, this is borrowing a lot more art from the manga than it is the anime. It's, oh god, especially on uh, uh, Jonathan. Oh, you think that? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> old no. school. No, no, this is definitely anime. Because you have not seen what original 80s manga looked like. It try it tried to actually be a Western comic. Yeah. Oh yeah, this series has history, folks. This is this is like, this has age on it. Anyway, it's so hard to believe Araki's over 50. I know. That right? man looks like he's 25. That's what everyone keeps saying. I know, right? <laughs> he is Lisa Lisa. <laughs> All right, so uh, me and Brian have kind of uh, gone ahead and decided what we're going to be doing. Um, I think I have part one, don't I? You have part one, three, five, and seven. I have two, four, six, and then we're both going to split up eight. Yeah, uh, just a quick warning, though. The episode counts are a little lopsided, uh, so... <laughs> Do you want to show them? Yeah, I'll show them really fast. So first of all, you'll notice this part only has like four parts. Which, you know, not a big, not big surprise, because there's only, like, one major villain you could showcase there. I would have straight to three. Unless you do, like, Brute Fur or something, but, um, part two, there's a, quite a few, because you do have the Pillman selectable. Oh, hey, it opens with, uh, uh, Zeppeli. Nice. Zeppeli. Caesar. Caesar. Close enough. I'm not wrong. Nice, uh, part nice, three, very nice, Caesar part, Sean. Part three, there's some meat. Yeah, I'm just doing this first, so I... God damn it. Yeah, at this I point, this. I would say just, just run through all of them. No, I, I just hate tra pressing X and it's like you can select now. Oh shit! Part four has bulk. It's it's smaller now, than three. Now here's a weird thing. Part five onwards, each 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 series has like maybe four less fights until you get to part eight. But that's weird. She has handcuffs. I yeah. Said. I mean, okay, granted, there's not a whole lot else you could do here, but okay. But well, there is. But the problem is. Character is that parts five and six had very weird stands. It wasn't until seven that they started going, uh, becoming a little more basic again. Some stands in five and especially in six didn't even have physical forms. Oh, Gyro is playable in this game. Cool. Yeah. So it would have been a little hard to make some of them playable. And then part A, we'll save part A for later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a surprise. Like, uh, oh, what the fuck? Like, uh, no. No, uh, one of them that would have been really hard. And they actually had to Ugh. cancel development of a character from Part Five because his stand has has very limited actual fighting capabilities. One of the main crew from Part Five. Is it uh not Aerosmith? No, Aerosmith is in there. It's I can't remember his fucking Abaccio Leone's uh, Moody Blues. Oh okay. All right, let's get this shit started. So each of these fights is kind of like a glorified boss fight. Also, you open up with uh, expository shit on each of the parts. 
Yeah. Yeah. We won't dwell on here for too long. I'll keep each text on the screen for long enough so you know what's happening. But um, if you started with part one, which you really should to know the whole canon as well as get the whole experience, um, this is pretty much. Um, I want to say this starts in the Burning Mansion. No, this is no. starting with Zeppelin. Okay. Which is weird because you think the first. Well, no, I guess that would have been considered a boss fight, but it'd be a little awkward. Especially with Jonathan at the time already knowing Hamon by the time he fought Dio in, in the mansion. Which, no, theoretically, he would have fucked him up, but yeah. Uh, also, of course, because we're playing a, a game by the guys who made Ninja Storm, we have load times everywhere that take a the while. The load times are nightmare. It's great. All right, so... You're going to start using it now, or you're going to wait a little bit? I'll demonstrate, I'll demonstrate really fast. I'm not okay. going to use anything crazy. Okay, so when you first get into the fight, um, you have the chair option just going right into it uh you have battle conditions here normally each one of them does have like some handicaps against you but what you can do you can buy support support effects what, what i recommend always is zeppeli's soul and actually can i see it for a second yeah definitely zeppeli's soul is very good zeppeli's soul and oh where is it zeppeli's soul and uh stone mask or where is it there's another one too I might have missed it. I think it was Cloud Armor. What's that? No, what Cloud that? Suit. Either or. Boost your defense or, bo or boost both. It's a matter of how you want to distribute your points. But I always say Zeppeli Soul and either Cloud Suit or Stone Mask. So yeah. however you want to go about it. Yeah. Uh, Zeppeli We're a little limited on points because I was actually... Because last week I was doing a stream <laughs> uh, uh, practicing the story and I used a bit more points than I probably should have. But that's yeah. okay. So long as you fulfill the secret missions... We'll get the points back in spades. Yeah, in truth, every single one of the a lot of these things completely cripple a lot of the AI, especially you know, like being able to completely block out your opponent's special meter and being able to, yeah, that, that one especially. That shit. Opal uh, Pearl GM is especially good for this for the fights where you start with only half health or a quarter health uh, hit square. Yeah. Yeah, it's stuff like that. Like land, like land one of your combos, land a throw, land. Uh, Land, uh, land your special or land your ultimate. I don't really know what those unlock you. They they give you bonus money. All right. And the bonuses are pretty good. They'll give you anywhere from oh God, one attacker. to four thousand. <laughs> I love how we only do this in the fucking speed wagon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for those who don't know, if you don't watch JoJo for some odd reason, uh, first of all, watch JoJo. Second of all, speed wagon is like your best friend ever. Okay. This game does something that uh, uh, does something that I quite like. That uh, uh, that injustice does, where uh, where if the camera allows you to veer off screen, you can actually see other characters that aren't playable but that would be in the area. Like yeah. if you're like in injustice, if you're fighting if you're fighting in the Arkham uh, stage, you'll actually see other characters like the Penguin or Poison Ivy or whatnot. Yeah. All right. So this game does have some very interesting features. So there's in general, there you know as well as in Jota lore in general, there's two different types of fighters: the stand users as well as Hobon users. Hamon users uh, do play uh, a lot differently than stand users, naturally. Um, if you hold this, the R1 button, which is normally a stand button for stand users, uh, lets you recharge your uh, your energy meter if you're using a Hamon user. So that's really cool. Um, that gives you an extra dynamic, as well as you know, you forces your opponent to have to play on the offensive. You have to you have to give something to the Hamon users so they sort of stop being a thing after a while, which is funny because the games really love to make old Joseph. Of, uh, keep using his Hamon with it with his stand abilities and with his regular abilities. Yeah. What I love but, is that is that I think inside there I think it, it's probably Eyes of Heaven, but there is one attack where uh, one of one of his ultimate attacks, where he doesn't even use Hermit Purple. He just he ties someone up with a rope and then he just charges Hamon through it and doesn't even use Hermit Purple when he could have just tied him up with Hermit Purple. Yeah. I'll have th things to say about Hermit Purple when we get to part three. But for the time being, uh, yeah. yeah. So, God, Brent, this is the first time we're actually tackling Joseph for a channel. Uh, what do you want to say about it so far? Part one is honest. Part one is awkward because part one does have a three act structure, even though it feels like it's only a two act structure. The second act is very, very rough. I could. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I couldn't finish part one the first time. <laughs> Because because the second half was just so slow and so boring. Which but it does get better though. That final, those final two episodes of part one are great. They're fantastic. Yeah. When you're actually in the room with Dio fighting Dio, and then especially when you're when you're on the ship. 
I will partially agree with you. Uh, the parts of, like Bruteford and th those that fight wasn't. It didn't move as the greatest pace in the world, but by that point, I was already intrigued. I was hooked on JoJo, so I was just going at it. Yeah. I literally finished parts one and two in two days. <laughs> I never fucking do that. It's funny too. I have a funny. Th okay, so I'll just explain while I'm going through this. So my history with JoJo, Brandon just randomly gave me uh, like parts one and two in subs <laughs> and like 720p. I don't remember what I was doing. It was in my old apartment uh, before this one. Oh um, god, that was a couple of years back. Yeah, uh, I want to say I started in like 2014. Um, yeah. So what happened was I was randomly going through my hard drive just seeing what I could have watched. I think I was just bored at the time, so I popped in JoJo for a little bit because I was like, all right, let's see what it's got. I've heard some good things, some good things. Part the fucking shit with Dio happens, and I'm just fucking hooked. And then, don't even get me started when part two starts. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Jo Joseph, Joestar, and Josuke are my waifus. Just straight up. It starts with it starts with Joseph punching out a cop. Yeah. How can you not love that? As well as blowing his fucking finger. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Is he doing the flip mission? No, no, no. no you're doing the right mission. Am I, though? Yes. Trust me. I was doing this. I was doing this literally a week ago. Okay. I keep forgetting the fucking zoom punch is a thing. I know, right? It's like, it's only a thing that Zeppeli used as an example, and then Jonathan did, like, one time. Not even against Dio. <laughs> no, he did it against... I think he might have used it against Tarkus. Yeah, I want to say it was against Tarkus. <laughs> Which, by the way, I love how I love how in Part 1, in Araki tried to really build up characters that you knew were never going to appear again after that one initial fight. Yeah. Because Dio went on that monologue for like five minutes about how they were betrayed by the queen or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that they served when they were knights. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, that was good. Yeah. You know, I had a thing a couple of minutes ago. I kind of lost it. <laughs> uh, we we're, were talking about general stuff for part one. Oh, yeah. Is I it's... definitely think part one is still very good. But uh, it's not especially, bad, especially but... in the anime. But it does pale in comparison to parts two and part four. I will say that it's not that it's bad. It's that it takes a long time to get going, because there's like a solid three episodes. No, it's a, it's a solid three or four episodes before Dio uh, starts doing things. Yeah, off screen he's just kind of like gathering energy and after the whole vampire transformation. Well, I, I guess you could argue the first time he started doing things. Was in like episode two <laughs> or three with Danny. Yeah. Poor Danny. Yeah. So Jonathan, how do you like the dinner I made for you? Uh, Sorry, it's a little burnt. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Wait, what, is the, what the hell is Zeppeli saying? Sendo? Yeah. Cause Hamon, depending on your translation, has like four different names. The Ripple, Hamon, Sendo. I think he calls it uh, Sendo Overdrive. Oh my god. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Just a little. <laughs> that fucking wine, though. You mean that paint? Yeah. For those who haven't watched it, totally <laughs> go check out JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the Bridge series by Ant Dude. Ant Dude? No, that's one of <laughs> Ant Fish. Ant Fish. Ant Dude, Ant Fish. I'm certain Ant Dude's going to do one eventually. Nah, but. That that is so good, yeah. Especially the Sean Connery voice they tried to get Zeppeli. <laughs> it worked. 